VIP access. VIP access with Aniko and Africa Loud. The guest on my podcast this week is no stranger to many in the Kenyan music industry. I would actually say the East African music industry. She's an established brand and a name. And if you're watching or listening from wherever around Africa or around the world, welcome to this beautiful individual artist who makes absolutely outstanding music from day one. This is Sage. Chemutai. What's up, girl? Hi, Aniko. <laughs> it's so great to unite With, again. After years, like almost, a, it's been a decade, actually. Yeah, it's almost been a decade. And we even didn't, maybe even meet, but I've seen you everywhere, you know, performing. I do follow your music. Very, I'm a staunch supporter and Aww. follower of Sage. So I know when there's a, like a new single collab and I love it for you. Thank you, my love. Thank How you. are you doing? I'm well. You know, I, I, I was talking about it just, you know, a few seconds ago saying, you know, you've been in the industry for quite, a, for a good number of years, I think yeah. since 2011 professionally. Yes. Um, and very few artists who, you know, were out then are still active now. Oh, yeah, that's true. So what would you say, you know, has been your thing that kept you going? Um, I think just the love of music. I think from a really young age, I knew I wanted to be a musician. Mm. So it's what I love. Um, it's how I express myself. It's where I find I am my most authentic. Mm. So I think that's it. That's 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 the se- the big mm. secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And have you ever been told this? When I hear your vocal runs, it's just like Beyonce. Ah, yes. So I and I, that's and that's such a <laughs> it's it's such a it, it's, it's it could be very controversial to say such a thing, especially when um, in the face of Beyonce fans. Yeah. But really, your runs. I don't know anyone who does runs like you do. It's Beyonce or Sage. <laughs> so um, I I discovered Destiny's Child when I was in high school, and like I was very obsessed with Beyonce. So. I would, that's how I learned how to run, like, vocally. You see? It's just, like, listening to her, going through it, going you through see? singing her songs Nobody over and even over. told me about it, but every time I hear you sing, I'm like, but how can she do it that way? She is, she is my vocal mother. Wow, you are such a great learner of Beyonce then, because... I don't feel like, oh, you're trying to do it like her. It's, it just has her own sage, you know, touch. Yeah. You know, it's it's just... I think in, you. initially it did sound very much like Beyonce, <laughs> <laughs> but like after years of just trying to also find my own voice, yeah. it, I tried to make it um, as close to my own as possible. Mm. Yeah. You know, there's that saying that imitation is the best form of fl- flattery, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, that's quite interesting that to, to know that you actually learned this from Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. It was who else? Yeah. <laughs> who else? And, and you who also else? define your music as rhythmic soul. What do you mean by that? Um, so we we call it rhythmic soul, both me and my um my producer Dili, because it's like a mix of um like the the different like musical elements. elements. So I really I love classical music. I listen to a lot of classical music as as a young girl. And then um R&B, it's like a mix of R&B, um, Afro soul, neo soul, soul, like it's just a, a mix of stuff. Mm. So yeah, we, we couldn't just call it like a neo soul or something because it didn't really fit in those genres. Mm. So rhythmic soul just made sense to us because it has that groove, but it's mm. also very soulful music. Mm. And you're actually classically trained, um, you know, in classical music. Classically trained uh, pianist. Pianist. So I started going to, I started attending the Kenya Conservatory of Music when I was nine years old. Um, my parents really encouraged all of us, all us kids to learn the piano when we were kids. So yeah, that's how I ended up learning the piano. Mm. Wow, you started early. Yeah. <laughs> so you basically had this relationship with music for quite some time now. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite interesting. And, um, you know, having been in the industry for for this amount of years, you know, from t- 2011 till now, you know, if you could look back to the sage, you know, I met when you were starting over and the sage now, what would you say 
you know, has been the biggest transformational change in your life, in your career, in your approach, you know, to business, just generally ooh, speaking. That's, ooh, that's a lot. Um, there's been such a huge change. Mm. Obviously, when you met me, I was new in the industry. I wasn't that new, but I was relatively new. Mm. Um, by the time you met me, I had played in a couple of bands and I'd played... Um, I was better known for playing for Muthoni, the drama queen. I was yes. her keyboardist and her yes. backup vocalist. And 2011 was when I actually went solo. Um, so just starting off, I think I, I sort of had it with like the live scene because of the experience with Muthoni. I was with her for three years. Mm. But from then until now, ooh, um, I think I was very... The last time we met, I was very naive when it came to copyright of my work, doing um, business as a musician, um, taking my business as a job. Because I think as you, when you're young, you, you sort of see music as something that, yes, you love it. Mm. You want to be successful at it. But you really don't have the tools. And by that time, there were very few tools. No one was giving classes on copyright yeah. law. Nobody was educating people like online. I feel like now with the expansion of the online and social media exactly. spaces. Yeah. People can share information so freely. People, like, even if you're not looking for it, it finds you. Yes. You'll always see, like, an interesting discussion yeah. on Twitter spaces or whatever. So I think one of the biggest changes in regards to music, like, I've, I've now learned how to handle the business and how to take... because. Also, during that time, music was not taken as a serious profession per se. It was like almost there, but not quite mm. there. And I feel like over the years, um, we as musicians, we as artists have learned how to view ourselves as actual business women and businessmen. Mm -hmm. And um, there's an increasing number of people now registering themselves, copywriting their work properly, like registering themselves as business LLCs. Um, like how we conduct ourselves, even like when we're called for shows has been very professional right now. Like I've seen a lot of people increasingly getting very professional, making sure there's invoices, making sure there's receipts, making sure there's rate cards. Like these are things that we didn't have. Someone just called you and was like, hello, I want you to perform at this thing. Uh, how much will you charge me? And you're like, mm -hmm, I need 20,000, 20,000 shillings. And they're like, ah, you know, we don't have 20,000. Like it, it was some weird debate. Now it's yeah. just like, okay, send me your email. Da -da, there's a rate card. Sometimes there's a form to fill. So it's been nice seeing that and being part of that um, business, music business growth in that mm. sense. I think one other thing was um, gaining confidence in myself as an artist. Because in the beginning, you know you have the talent and you're excited about it. But everybody wants to dictate which direction you should go, what mm, you should do. How you should sound. After very many trial and error um, situations, I've finally come to the conclusion that I actually, to some extent, know what I'm doing. Because mm. everybody wants to control you. But like after experiencing so many things, you now have that knowledge to be able to trust in your own opinion when it comes to your your music, how you um, perform it, how you create in studio releases and such. Yeah, mm. I mean, there's so much. There's so much. There's so much difference. But yeah, I think it's it's been mainly in the business growth and then in this self-awareness as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in terms of the business growth, that would mean also there's like more, you know, better paying opportunities. Yeah. You so know, more events, more festivals. More events, more festivals. And then you also know how to sort of, um, how, how, how do I put this? Um, you know, you find ways to plug yourself into different spaces mm. as well. Because mm. sometimes, and you find solutions to the problem of where are the gigs? Yeah. You learn how to create your own shows. Mm. I think that's another thing, learning how to create your own shows and not just depending on other people to call you for shows. And yeah, I like it's it's nice that now just... Also knowing, like, I'm good at this. Nobody else is doing this particular thing. Mm. How can I then turn this into business? Yeah. Even doing, because I've ended up um, doing jingles for ads, um, doing a callback um, tone for 
um, a company and going into advertising as well. So Fantastic. it's been nice to also expand yeah. as a musician. Yeah, like also expand your revenue streams. Yeah. That's amazing. So your um, debut EP, Expose Yourself, came in 2015. Yes. And then there was Jungle Trap that dropped last year. Um, 2020. 2020. 2020. It's not last year. Ah, so the, Jungle the Trap <laughs> dropped in 2020. We lost we lost count Ooh. of years since COVID. <coughs> um, and, you know, I read an interesting thing in your bio that, um, you know, you explained Jungle Trap or de described it as, you know, you coming back and just you getting a new lease of life yeah. from a period that was rather depressing. So I wanted to find out whether this period was associated with COVID. You know, most of the conversations I've been having in, in this podcast is like um, also interviewing all brand new artists who all came out in bet between like 2018 and 2019. And mm -hmm. it seems to be an ongoing kind of theme, theme that during COVID, everybody, you know, was so int introspective. Everybody took time to, I don't know, be out or think about their lives or something. Some, like my own day was like me. I had actually just started, you know, looking back into myself just before COVID. So then the world joined me. So I also wanted to find out like um, mm -hmm. with, with that dark space you talked about or wrote about how back. So know, my dark space was from way, like far, far back. Because mm -hmm. um, I have been open about talking about like my postpartum depression. And like it really extended. I don't think people understand how long someone can be in a depressive state or how um how many times one can revisit that same depressive state. Like you can just be in for like six months and then out for a few and then back in. Like it's really can be really difficult to like mm. get out of a depressive um state. So it's it was years of just feeling depressed and really trying to come out into my own again and mm. write music again because it it was really hard for me to write, to express myself. I felt really numb for many years. And I feel like 2018, 2019 was when I started feeling like, I sort of feel like myself again. I sort of feel like I can do this again. So I did the Jungle Trap EP and it was a very, it was like, um, I, I every time I had the studio, I told my producer, it's two love songs and a vent because the three songs were me venting and the two other songs were love songs. I said, it's two love songs and a vent. Um, and I remember like we, we got done recording it October, 2019. And I was so excited to drop it. I was like, oh my God, yes, I'm finally getting stuff out. Ooh. And then January comes and we're like getting ready. We're like mixing, mastering, doing stuff. And then COVID like hit in March. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, it's so funny because it like, I was Finally, I felt like I'm finally doing this. I'm finally happy. I'm finally doing a thing and I'm back to me. And then I Everything just felt like I was dragged comes to back stop. into the hole again. Of course. So even with the release of Jungle Trap, when I released it, I didn't do so much promo for it. I was just really exhausted. I felt so defeated because it was like... Life had told me, because postpartum depression really makes you slow. Like, not even postpartum, but like being a new mom, mm. you have to slow down. Yes. Your life is it's not the same. So being a, a mom had forced me to slow down. And I'm not a slow down person. I am a, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. I'm ready to do this. And all of a sudden, I was, a, I, was I slowed down. And now I'm finally getting back on it. And then I'm You're being forced, forced to slow, to slow down, slow down again. again. And I'm no like, gigs. God, what is it? Yeah. Uh, so I just dropped Jungle Trap. I did very little promo for it. I remember feeling so bad because I had so many plans of things to do mm. and especially live performances. And it just, I felt so defeated. And 2020, so I decided like, let me get into like the healthy thing. I was walking because I was going to go crazy staying in the house. So I had started doing 5 KMs every morning. I'd wake up and just walk for 5 KMs walk. Uh, did that 2020, 2021. Things started slowly looking better. Mm. But I had just, I wasn't, I didn't want to see that studio. Mm. I was like, I'm not going to the studio. Nobody's seeing me at the studio. Thank you. It's weird because during that time, during COVID, when I was home, um, I collaborated with a couple of international artists. 
And it was just like a for fun thing, stuff I was recording on my phone and sending to them. Like I'd record my vocals and send to them and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. And then we plan a release date and they released and they're like, oh wow, they're so excited about this song. But I was just like, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> like I, It was nice to work with them, but at the same time it was, I felt empty because I felt like, I wish I had, like, I wish I had their enthusiasm mm. about creating and, like, um, you know, just being out there, being a an artist again, being a musician, and being proud of my work. Mm. I think that was the main thing, being proud of my work and being proud of what I'm putting out. Because I felt like with Jungle Trap, it was like, ah, here you go. Mm. So after that, I think that's when I sort of went more into, like, doing advertising because mm -hmm. there are no gigs. There's so no, you just no, had to, so you know, was, everyone yeah. had to figure out something. And it just happened, like, it was just by flukes that I got into advertising. Because I, I used to do advertising before, but, like, um, singing jingles. But, like, it was a one-off thing. Like, once a year, someone will call me and be like, hi, we need you for this. But now I was doing it um, increasingly. So 2022 is when... I started writing again. The thing with when I, I'm in a depressive episode, it's really hard for me to express myself. It's really hard. Because eh, all the things I write when I'm depressed, like every, all the music I write, it just sounds bad. <laughs> it's like, oh God. <laughs> maybe maybe it sounds bad to you. You should <laughs> no, be releasing it, it to us bad. and we can be the <laughs> judges. <clears throat> Sorry. It, like, it honestly just sounds like, mm, mm. Uh, so 2022 actually started on a really good note because mm. that's when people had started um, getting back to like performance yes, and yes, stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And I got really nice. I was doing more like corporate gigs and like really like it was it was looking like oh wow we are finally back thank you Jesus because <laughs> I if I like in 2021 I had given up I was like you want me to slow down I will slow down and I was like. Just wait Aces till your things hands. open. Yeah. Because really nothing was happening. Because you, you can't fight. You yeah. can't Venues fight. Like, closed. Things. Yeah. So 2022, I ended up doing a couple of like really nice shows. And it was such a monumental year for me because in um, September, we went, um, me and Fee were part of an organization called Niado. And we went to Italy to go and sing for the Pope. It was such a random thing. It was like, I felt like I was, one, I felt like I was the most useless artist. I felt like nobody wants to listen to you anymore. Just shut up. And just, I was, 2020 and 2021, I felt so defeated. You could not tell me of, Sage, come back. I was just like, no, I'm tired. Leave me alone. I'm going to go and start my, and answer some farm somewhere and live there. Uh, but yeah, we went to Italy and just that experience, I was just like, wow, I just, I can't believe. Wasn't that such a sign? You know, when you just feel like uh, uh, no one is seeing me, nobody cares. Then this yeah. huge opportunity comes just when you're not Out expecting. Out of nowhere, yeah. It was very, it was, I think that's the moment. I remember going and just, I think sometimes you need a change of space to reignite something in you again, mm. like to reignite your passion for something. Because I remember going and just being in a different space and watching other people do their music, watching other people like live their lives and just feeling like, wow, like I actually do want to be a musician. Because mm. sometimes, there, there are times when you want to quit something and it's the time to quit the thing. And then there's sometimes when you want to quit something because you feel like it's getting hard. Yeah. Or like you feel like you can't get over the mountain. Exactly. And I feel like it was just a reminder that, a reminder of why I'm doing this in the yeah. first place. Why are you doing this? This is how you express yourself. This is how, like, this is this is your love letter to the world. So when I came back, I remember, I, I think I went to studio when I came. Yeah, I did go to studio. When I came back, I went to studio and I did a collab with... Um, uh, Jivu, there's some two guys called mm. Jivu. They're such amazing artists. I also did a produced collab by Dili, I think. Uh, so this the song we did with them uh, was produced by Waidaka. Mm. And it was so much fun. And I was like, oh my God. And even just coming back and sharing the knowledge that I had gotten when I was in Italy mm. was really nice. 
to just be in that space again with with musicians. There's a thing like I think COVID also separated us from the people who inspire us as well. Yeah. Because just coming back and seeing people who inspired, like I'd missed Dili so much and him playing for me tracks. I'm like, oh my God, this sounds so good. It was so nice yeah. to be in that space. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to do something. I like I have some content. So I'm going to come next year and we're just going to do our project together. And yeah, it's it's been a while. Nobody has seen me in the streets. And then all of a sudden I'm in the streets again. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like just being brand new. It's like it's it's, it's a it's a little scary, you know, almost like yeah. when you were starting starting. But I think um the the difference with this one is that I'm finally in a place where I am happy with I'm doing it with my, like it's it's come with my full chest and not like it's like a hobby or something. Yeah. I now know who I am and I am proud of who I am and um I think what I love about my fans is that they they've stood by me for so many years. Oh mm. my lord, I'm so sorry for all your sufferings. <laughs> <laughs> it's but so your funny prayers, but your prayers were answered because um the beginning of the year, so many people were on my case oh. nagging me about going back to studio releasing music. The last song you released was this one, the last song you released because some people still think the last song I released was Dumbala. So Aye. you can imagine now the pressure those people are yeah. giving me. They're like the last song you released was in 2013. It was 10 years ago. It's like, I'm in studio. Something is happening. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope people are enjoying it. I hope people are, like, are also sort of getting to know me as this. That's the thing about projects. Mm. Like, you can be obsessed with... For so long, I was so scared of making more projects after Expose Yourself because I love that album so much. It and I felt so like, that amazing. was my best work. I can't top that work. And the pressure you give yourself makes you now sort of stop giving people the authentic version of you because mm. you're scared that you've evolved and maybe people are not evolving with you. And they'll get, obviously, they get a different version of you every album. It's true with every artist. No artist has given you the same version of them yeah. every album. If they did, they would be so boring. But, yeah, I think that fear also. But, yeah, I think I'm in a season of this is me. I'm happy to be me. And if you're accepting me as me, great. If you're not, <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just. I'm, I'm, I'm just. Um, yeah, putting myself out there, being vulnerable again. Mm. Something that was so hard for me to do this these past like ten years. Mm. So, if someone would ask you who is Sage, how mm -hmm. would you introduce yourself as oh an individual, God. as an artist, as a brand? Uh. So. Oh. Okay. So this, I, I, my, I'm originally Barbara. <laughs> so, See, I didn't even know that. I love it. Originally Barbara. Barbara is my it. real name. Hey, Babs. <laughs> Not Babs. Hi, <laughs> Call me Barbie. Okay, hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbara. That's a really it's fancy name. It's Barbie. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I think I'd, Barbara is, Barbara is very, like, geeky. She's into intellectual stuff. Uh, she likes books. She likes studying stuff. Barbara is more into classical music. Barbara is the pianist. Um, she's the one who likes discovering things and just knowing the world in and out. But Chemutai Sage uh, is a person who believes in a better world. Like I know it sounds very cliche, but like Chemutai Sage believes in a better world. She believes in giving people hope. I think that's one of the biggest things for me is I love to to feel like I can give people hope in something being better, mm. especially after being, because depression is basically you feeling like you're, it's the end of the road. It's done. You're done. Nothing can get better from here. And I think just having even a like tiny little bit of hope can change uh, someone's worldview can change, can like it, it can really push someone to do things that they didn't think were possible. Mm. So Chamuchai Sage is, is a creative. She is an explorer. She is, and I'm not trying to be self-absorbed, but like she's a visionary. I, I like to think of myself as a visionary because of 
sometimes I do. I, I like taking risks. And especially where people won't go. And mm. I don't care. And I'm just like, let's see. If it backfires, cool. If not, thank God. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's a visionary. She's um more and more becoming an educator as well. I love to share my knowledge, especially with upcoming artists. Um, and what else is Shemutai Sage? She is. Yeah, she is a a woman. Yeah, a woman and a mother and a mom. Yeah, that's nice. I love it. I love this. Push and a storyteller and a storyteller. A storyteller at the core. At the core of everything. Yeah, is a story being told. Yeah. So just so you know, like for the Chemutai Sage fans, like we never um, felt like. Now we di- didn't like you. So me, I'm speaking for the fans because I'm a fan, <laughs> you know. And I was following like those collaborations with the international artists. Oh, I was wow. literally going like to Apple Music or Spotify or whatever, and I just searched Sage because I'm like, si jamona. <laughs> is there a song out? So sometimes you find like there's a collab, Unajua. Then yeah. there's a jungle trap, also impressed by it. But then you're also the kind of artist like who is not. Um, usual, you know, Sage comes once in a lifetime. Oh. And one thing I feel like we haven't even spoke about properly is, um, you know, your the way you fuse different sounds. Like you take Afro pop, you take R and B, you take soul. You know, you fuse it with jazzy elements, classical music. Sometimes when you hear the song, like it's it's different kind of soul elements coming from different kind of beats and even how you use your vocals as an instrument and for me I find that so so unique and also I feel it gives you an edge because sometimes when I listen to a sage song I am so proud because I'm like if Jay-Z bumps into this song or Kanye West or whoever you know Mm. they wouldn't be able to place like um, where she's from they'll probably think like she's a 10-time Grammy Award-winning artist, and they'll probably want to to have you collab with them in an album. And it's not everyone who would have that ability to sound, I would say, maybe global, you know. Mm -hmm. um, And you have that. So I think, for me, that's super unique. And, you you. know, the little moments here and there, you give us a song or an album or an EP, like, for me, I truly appreciate. And even if you you are missing for a couple of years, you know, we still have really great music from you. I always go back even to your debut EP, (laughs) and I'm like, eh, clearly this was a bob. (laughs) You know, and that's a a great thing, like, with with dope artists. You know, it doesn't matter whether the record came in 2015, I'm a... Yeah, 2022, like yeah. all of them sound a certain quality. And I think you're one artist who's always maintained that quality. And I really you. appreciate you for that. And um, I, I guess anybody listening, you know, they can go listen to your music. They'll be shocked. They'll be, they'll be like, I've been sleeping on this artist. <laughs> so receive your flowers. Thank you. That's Thank so you for the sweet. new record. And um, yeah, I hope more music comes in the coming years. Definitely. Something like COVID doesn't happen again. <laughs> if it happens, I'm ready. Yes. I think I think we just needed that one experience yes. to be like, if anything like this happens again, what can yes. I, what would I have done better? Yeah. But now we know. Yeah. We, we, we know. needed to go through it. We went through it. Yeah. And thank God we're on the other side. Yeah. So talking about, um, you mentioned like you're keen to give knowledge to artists in the industry, especially those who are starting, you know, from your own experience, from, yeah. you know, traveling, from working with various artists and producers. So I'm curious what kind of advice or, um, you know, lessons Mm-hmm. Would you give to anyone listening? They don't have particularly to be to be from Kenya, but you are just starting out and yeah. you're trying to, you know, have a longevity of a career. So what kind of advice would you give to any artist, especially in Africa, listening? Mm, I think um, primarily and most importantly, authenticity sells over everything. People want a connection. I think... A lot of us get lost in all the, oh, this is what's in, this is the hype, this is whatever. And sometimes your authentic could even like be at the same time as the hype and it's what the hype is. Yes. But it's really important to be your authentic self. And by authentic self, I don't mean that you have to sound different from everybody else because there's nothing new under the sun. But that you have to be honest in the way you present yourself. You cannot come with a facade and 
try and be somebody else or try and be like try and photocopy other things because people get those vibes and the vibe and vibes don't lie so people want a connection and as long as you can connect to people through your honest um, experience it's easier for you to perambulate these this these artist streets and then the second is uh, know your rights know your rights when it comes to your music when it comes to songwriting when it comes to collaborations know your rights always have paperwork um and then number three is be consistent and by consistent doesn't mean releasing a song every week but be consistent in showing up it's it takes a lot being someone who's self-employed and someone who doesn't have a boss to answer to it takes a lot and then things like creative which comes with a feeling which comes with the, i have to be in the mood to write just to be consistent in how you show in showing up as an artist because when you take yourself seriously people do take you seriously out there yeah amazing thank you so much Sage. thank you Aniko. but we have to say something to your fans who are listening oh. or those <laughs> who are just about to become new fans yes mm-hmm. where am i looking there mm-hmm. to my dear dear sage fans uh i love you i really appreciate you for just listening vibing with me connecting with me there are no better people that I would have gone on this ride with. And I cannot wait to make more magic, to connect with you at live shows, to invite you to other things apart from live shows, to create more and involve you in the creation. But thank you. This is my heartfelt thank you for sticking with me all these years. For those who are new, you are welcome. Uh, there's only love here. Only love. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you on behalf of the fans. And I don't know why you were going to say make magic and I thought you were going to say, I can't wait to make money with you. I mean, that's too. <coughs> money is also invited. Yeah, money so if you're invited. watching, listening, and you're a great event organizer, booking agent, please, we need you to call Sage because she's yes. one of the greatest and most amazing performers that you'll ever see at a concert. Thank you so much, Sage, Thank for you, coming Aniko. through to VIP Access. Thank you. I love that. I appreciate you so much. All Thank those you. who are listening, that was Sage on my podcast this week. Please go out on social media and follow her everywhere. She's Chemutai Sage. Her music is online. You know, go stream, support, and you will not be disappointed. Next week, I'm having yet another powerful female who will blow your mind. Ciao. VIP access, VIP access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.